everybody, welcome back to the Bay Bolts channel. The Bolts with their sixth consecutive win, scoring six goals in a six to one win over the Nashville Predators. Welcome back to another episode of Quick Strikes, where we take a look at every single game after it happens, give you the positives, give you the negatives, tell you what we liked from the game. My name is Michael Wack, joined here as always with my co-host Jake Ricker. Jake, a pretty good game overall. What did you think? Absolutely. Michael, play all night. I'm very happy. Another Bolts win, the sixth consecutive. As you mentioned, you know, at the start of this game, I was a little bit worried. I thought, you know, anytime a team goes on a win streak, you always expect to eventually have that really bad game that just doesn't go your way. And I thought that might have been tonight after those first couple of minutes. But man, did the Bolts completely flip a switch here and played another fantastic game. Absolutely. We'll get right into it. But before we do get right into it, guys, we want to hear what you think down in the comments below. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't like from the game. If you disagree or agree with us when you watch the entire video, be sure to let us know in the comments down below and we will respond to you accordingly. Make sure to do it before the next game, because like, like we've said in the past, the schedule goes by very quickly. So starting off the game, it really felt like Tampa was getting their play dictated by the way that Nashville was playing. They were really suckered in Nashville's game. Uh, you saw uh, Eric Chernak really get suckered in uh, by Mark Borowiecki, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. Please feel free to co correct me in the comments down below. But uh, Chernak was, was very active physically. Uh, we really thought there was going to be a fight in this game with the way that the two teams were interacting with each other. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, it was a bit of a rocky start to Tampa's game. Yeah, and credit to Nashville, they came out and played a very strong beginning or st strong game at the beginning of this one. They looked good, and you know they played physical. Like you said, got Tampa suckered into their game, and it it paid off for them. Now the other thing too, with the start of this game, the Bolts were taking penalties uh, and taking some dumb penalties at that. Ruda had a really really bad penalty where he kind of just turned around, cross checked the guy up in the face. Uh, and got sent to the box for it. So that was, it was a rough, I think it was about five, six minutes for the Bolts. They they did not look good. Nashville came out strong. It looked very well, uh, very good. And Nashville ended up getting the first goal as well to take an early one nothing lead. So, you know, it was a little concerning at first, but the, the way that this team responded is what makes the Bolts so good, is what's made them so good for the past couple of years now. They, they really were able to respond, which was the important thing from this game. But yeah, early, uh, not a good look, taking way too many penalties, and they corrected it, though. They did correct it. You know, the one thing that we want to get uh, off our chest, or at least we want to say about Nashville very positively, uh, one thing that I tweeted out during the game was, if you want to see what Yanni Gord looks like in a different jersey playing against the Lightning, look at Rocco Grimaldi. Grimaldi is someone that I wanted uh, the Lightning to get last year at the trade deadline. I wrote about him in one of our articles over on thepucknetwork.com. Uh, he's the, one of the smallest players in the NHL. He's very tenacious. Uh, he doesn't give up a single second, uh, any inch of ice. Uh, and he was rewarded with Nashville's first goal. But like you mentioned earlier, the Lightning found a way to respond. And whether that was through the power play itself or capitalizing off of uh, basically odd man situations. The Lightning found themselves up by three to end the period. You, you know, you got Steven Stamkos, Andre Palat, and Matthew Joseph getting into the play. And someone that was on the score sheet but didn't score any goals, Mikhail Sergachev had an awesome game. Uh, probably his best game, of, definitely his best game of the season. One of, uh, Probably one of his best games since I don't know, maybe partway through last year's playoffs. Just a fantastic game by Sergachev. Yeah, a lot of credit needs to go to Sergachev. You know, just a couple of games ago, he was talking about his, he was playing some of his his worst hockey and things weren't going well for him. And he turned things around very quickly. He looked fantastic tonight. He was all over the place and making plays and uh, just a fantastic job by him. And that's a lot of, again, credit to to him and his character in knowing that he was struggling there and was able to turn things around, come right back out and play such a fantastic game. And there's a lot of guys too in this one that deserve a lot of credit. You mentioned Stamkos, Point, Palat, all of them. Even Vassy, I thought, played a pretty solid game overall. Uh, so many guys stepped up in this one. Uh, Michael, we were talking before with the three stars. You could have given out seven stars in this game. That's how many guys played so well. And then also, uh, I want to give a shout out to the power play as well. I think the power 
play was fantastic tonight. You know, uh, they had they were three for six, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. They had three, three, three power play goals, and they they looked very, very good. I liked what I saw from them. They had great puck movement, got a lot of good opportunities, scored on three of them, obviously, and yeah, very nice. And one thing too, I want to give a shout out to John, uh, Coach Cooper. Because on the second half of that double minor towards the end of the game, Cooper put out a completely different line that you don't normally see. It wasn't the first line or second or first unit or second unit. It was just, you know, it was Joseph, a couple other Volkov guys that you don't normally get that chance. And that was Cooper right there saying, hey, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity on the power play to get some work in and kind of mess with the lines and see what could possibly work here. So credit to Cooper taking advantage of that situation and, you know, getting some guys some extra playing time there. Absolutely. The power play overall three for five on the night and they scored one of their goals directly after a power play. So four goals basically coming with a man advantage. Uh, no goals in the second period. I thought the defense did a smothering job limiting Aspel's chances, really giving Vasilevsky. I don't want to say the night off because he did face more shots than McElhinney. He did make some key saves just like McElhinney did last night, but it really felt like he wasn't challenged for the majority of the game, which is nice for Andre Vasilevsky being able to go into the game and expect to be really, really solid in net and expect to have that defense right in front of you be solid and have a ton of shot suppression. Uh, major uh, thumbs up, by the way, to Nigel Kerwin, the Tim Bay Lightning's video coach for instituting that uh, offsides challenge in the second period, keeping it a three to one game. Uh, you know, the, the skate was ever so slightly offsides, but in the NHL, if it's offsides, it's offsides and they're going to call it. So props to Kerwin, uh, just a, a really good, solid game all around. We're going to get to the, the third period and who scored goals, but I, I really, it was hard to come up with negatives in this game overall. It was. And how many times have we said that, Michael, this year? It just seems like the Lightning are always playing so many good games. It's it's great. You know, hopefully the it doesn't come to an end soon. Hopefully they can keep that up. But and you're right, just just not not a lot of negatives. And uh, going off that that offsides challenge, it was a great job by them to see that and make that call and get that goal off the board because Nashville was buzzing a little bit there at that point. And, you know, I honestly should have that have been a goal probably, but, you know, rules are rules. That's the way it is. So nothing we can do about the rules. Um, and, and Vassy played a great game. He had a fantastic save, by the way. I don't remember who took the shot, but someone had a huge slap shot and Vassy was able to grab it up high. Uh, so he had a couple of very nice saves in this game as well but fantastic job by the Bulls. And Michael's about to talk about the third period was probably one of the better third periods we have ever seen the Lightning play. Yeah, because at that point, the game was still three to one. And you wondered, does Nashville have enough to muster a comeback? You know, Matias Ekholm didn't play uh, for a couple of shifts in the second period, was going to be out for the entire third period. But you wondered if that defense was going to step up and the forward depth was going to be able to get that comeback. But as the Nashville broadcast, which I was fortunate enough to watch, didn't have to watch NBC, uh, they mentioned that the Lightning are actually 8-0 and and now 9-0 and when leading after two periods. So just pure domination so far by the Lightning. They haven't had to win a single game in the third period. All of the nine wins that they've had have been because they've carried leads from the first 40 into the final 20. And they just dominated that third period. You know, they capitalized off an icing call. Yanni Gord gets a rebound goal. Uh, Steven Stamkos gets the best pass I can think of from Braden Point. I, I was like, Braden Point is so talented. Like, this guy is incredible. Uh, and then uh, Matthew Joseph getting some power play time, like Blake Coleman, like Alexander Volkov. Uh, and he pots another one, two for the birthday boy. Uh, and Alexander Rolko gets his second career assist. We thought he was going to get a goal in this game. Unfortunately, that uh, that little streak of ours uh, did not happen. But he did get his second NHL point, which I think is good enough for today. Uh, just a stifling third period and a really, really solid period in order to get goals by Pecorino. 
I mean, or UC Saros, UC Saros. I apologize. Correct. It, I mean, it was basically a picture perfect third period. To be honest with you, I mean, I mean, you, there's nothing you can complain about. Again, the, you know, even when they had that the double minor there, the power play, as I mentioned before, was fantastic. Everybody just kind of chipped in, played so good, crisp passes, and really just completely shut Nashville down. They did didn't have anything close to a chance to come back in that game. So, you know, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but just fantastic job by the Bolts. They look fantastic in this one. But, uh, Michael, they're going to have a tough opponent coming up here in these next games. So, you know, they're going to be tested. You know, things are not going to get easier for them. Uh, so we'll see how they do going forward here heading into the weekend. Absolutely. Uh, Jake, before we go into what could happen this weekend, what was your main negative from this game? We talked about how there weren't that many, and I think I know what it is, but, you know, tell us why, you know, penalties are your main negative in this game. Well, you nailed it. My negative is the penalties. And, and listen, you know, it's, I've said this a couple of times now. When you play teams like who we're going to play this weekend in the Florida Panthers, uh, who are playing some great hockey right now, or teams like the Carolina Hurricanes, which is one of our only losses in regulation that we that came to, uh, you can't give those guys multiple opportunities. In fact, they said it on the Nashville broadcast today. They said, you cannot give the Tampa Bay Lightning so many power play opportunities. And the same goes for us as well. So, if you're taking dumb penalties, kind of like Ruta's one, which was one of the worst I've ever seen, hopefully he just had gets that bad game out of his system and can get right back into the way he normally plays. But you just can't do that. That's something that's got to be fixed. Good teams do not take that many penalties. You know, listen, penalties are going to happen. Sometimes there's a lot of calls that are just questionable and people don't agree with. You know, things happen, but they're taking way too many and it's in penalties can be a huge momentum killer as well, especially if the team is able to score on them. So that's something I really would like to see the lightning crack down on and fix, especially as we get into a little bit of a tougher part of the schedule here for the next couple of days. Absolutely. If I had to choose a negative from this game, just to be different from you and going with the penalties, it, we got to talk about these line changes. The lightning had two horrific line changes. The first one was on one of the goals that they actually scored. They had seven people on the ice. That is a major blunder by the officiating crew to not catch the Lightning at seven people on the ice. I mean, I'm going to take it because, again, we're fans of the Tampa Bay Lightning, but you can't have that happen over and over again because you're going to negate those scoring chances with penalties, which you already talked about we're taking too much of. The second bad line change came on Nashville's goal that got overturned. Tampa Bay got so, so lucky that that goal was overturned for offsides because again, another terrible line change. Eric Chernak couldn't get to the guy because of what I thought was an illegal screen by Philip Forsberg, but there was no defensive partner to help Eric Chernak because they were still making a line change. That's the stuff I think that the lightning really need to tighten up on uh, when they go into their Thursday game against Florida. Now, Florida is going to be a really, really tough opponent. Jonathan Huberto, Alexander Barkov, and our old friend Carter Verhage are basically one of the best lines in hockey right now. Uh, and, you know, our old friend Anton Stroman also there as well. Uh, this is going to be probably my favorite game of the season so far. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome. I absolutely agree with you there. You know, for the Florida Lightning rivalry for rival, rivalry, can't say that word, but, um, you know, for a long time, it's been dominated by the Lightning. The Lightning have always had the Panthers number, but, you know, I think that could be different this year. It's going to be, they're a good team. They look very good anyway. You know, maybe, maybe we're wrong and we're just seeing uh, an illusion right now, but they're a good team. The Lightning are going to be playing their best. And, and, you know, it gets harder too. When you, when you win so many games in a row, it's like I said, uh, you know, eventually you're bound to lose one. So we'll, we'll see how, if Lightning can continue that and keep it up. But, uh, you know, if they play anything like they have for these past couple of games, they should have a very good shot at taking down the Florida Panthers because they look fantastic. Absolutely. The Lightning will travel down to South Florida for their first of a three game set with the Florida Panthers on Thursday. A little bit of a schedule change. They won't be playing two back to back against an opponent. They'll be playing three against the same opponent. But guys, uh, that will do it for this one. Unless, Jake, you have anything else for this video. 
Nope. I think that about wraps it up. And just to work with the three game, you know, playing Florida Panthers three times in a row, I think the last game is actually in or in Tampa at Amelie. So uh, they're not all in sunrise. There's going to be two in sunrise, then back uh, to Tampa for that one. So a little bit different there as well, where you're not playing, uh, you know, one team all in one city, you are having a little bit of travel time there as well in between that second and third game. So interesting to see how all that plays out, but a very exciting schedule coming up here nonetheless. Very exciting schedule indeed. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That's going to do it for this episode of Quick Strikes. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell for more notifications. Comment down below what you thought. We will respond to your comments. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the social media platforms at Bay underscore Bolts. And follow us on Twitter, most likely, for news, notes, and game recaps. And if you made it this far in the video, we forgot to mention this earlier, Please send in your fan art submissions for our second edition of the fan art clips video where we're going to talk about everything that we see from merchandise to art to basically anything that was fan made that we get sent to us via any social media platform. Uh, guys, for Jake Ricker, my name is Michael Wax. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, your Tampa Bay Lightning are on a roll. <laughs> Go Bolts.